everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this pretty gift bag, which is kind of a gift box as well, but it's in the style of a satchel, which I thought was really cute. And I've used this lovely piece of hardware here to make the buckle, which I like. I've got some little brads here on the top, which I use quite a lot. They just always seem to work well. And then it's just kind of fastened with a Velcro dot. And then when you lift it up, you open this piece up and there you have your gift box. So it's a decorative handbag gift box or something like that anyway. This is optional, once you see me put it all together you may not want to do it that way but because you get that slight curved part here it was nice to have whatever inside you know closed over I guess so it doesn't fall out but if you're putting something in there that you know you know isn't going to kind of escape then you wouldn't need to pop that bit there but when we get to it you'll be able to see that anyway so it's very easy to do. It's using two sheets of 12 by 12 and I think that looks really quite lovely so let's show you how to make it. Okay, so this is the paper pack I'm using and I shared this last week in my What Did I Get video. This is from The Works, it's £3 and it's called Flowers Blooming and it's beautiful. I did flick through all the papers um, in that one so I'm not going to do it again today but I will share the links in my blog if you want to get your hands on that because it's gorgeous. Okay, so like I said, it needs two, takes two pieces of 12 by 12 to make this and then I've got these extra pieces here which I'll go through with you in a minute. So these are my two pieces, so I've gone for this lovely rose print here and then on the back it's got that pattern now. I've already marked for, um, an F on there so I know it's the front because I've already scored it but I'm going to go through those score um, lines again with you now. So choose whatever paper you want. I would say if you've got something that is really specifically directional and it needs to be up the right way then that will be okay for the front piece which again I will talk you through but if you've got something that's going on the back you have to bear in mind that if it's facing up this way the right way by the time it curves over it's going to be upside down when it comes to the front here I mean I have got this kind of strip here but you do need to bear that in mind okay so if you, you really need a piece of a pattern paper that's not directional okay so this is just kind of going all over the place so it works well for this piece so this is going to be the front the one that I'm going to go through with you first so this is what creates all of this front piece here and this all of this bit that we do um, to close the, the box there that's what we're going to score now so 12 by 12 piece and you want to score at two and a half and at nine and a half okay then rotate your cardstock and again score at two and a half and then you want to score at eight and a half and then you're going to score at 11. Okay, so if I flick that over, you should be able to see there my score lines. Okay, so pop it back that way so you've got that last kind of half inch score line, I'm um, sorry, one inch score line, that's why you just scored at 11. Have that facing the top because that's going to be the top of the kind of closure for the box inside. Okay, so that is your front, although I marked an F on that to say that that was my front, but it's not, it's the back. <laughs> so good job, because that wasn't going to help me at all. Okay, so then with this piece, this is now going to be the back and the piece that curves over. So you want to score again at two and a half, and again at nine and a half. And then you want to rotate the cardstock, and again score at two and a half, and then you're going to score at eight and a half. So the score lines are exactly the same, except on this piece you're not going to score at 11, that's the only difference. Okay, so first of all we will cut, should we get rid of that? No, keep that here for a minute and I'll tell you this piece here that you need, because this is, you need the scoreboard. And then you need a piece of four by seven, and this is for this piece here. So it's more decorative, because this, when it kind of curves over, it only actually comes to about here and I wanted more length, so that's why I've added this on, but I also think it kind of adds to that satchel effect. So that's what this is here. So this is four by seven, and along the four inch side, you want to score at two inches, and then fold and burnish that in half, and you can see now how that's gonna work on the front. And then just while I've got the scoreboard out, again, these are purely decorative, well, that one's for the buckle, but you want two pieces that are one by six, and then this piece here is one and a half, by five and these buckles I picked up from the works some time ago but I think they're still in there and again I will share with you you know any links that I can find and then all I've done is just kind of weaved it through there and then back in on itself 
and yeah I just think it's a really nice kind of little um, accessory there for your gift bag, gift boxes, whatever, and then the two brads. And these again are from the pound shop. They have them in there all the time. And all I've done, I'll just quickly do it now because I'll need to do it anyway. Oh, hit my lamp. Is just open up the brads or the split pin part of it and just cut those off because I'm. you can obviously make a hole and actually use them as they're intended, but I prefer just adding my hot glue to these and just sticking them on top and that way you don't get any um, holes coming through okay so again it's entirely up to you though so, so we're starting with the front first so this is that piece where you've scored at 11 inches you'll have that extra one there and so that you can seal the score lines better you need to fold and burnish them all now and then you'll be able to see exactly where we are okay so now you will have that kind of shorter piece at the top and then you'll have your two and a half and your nine and a half score lines there and then you should have a two and a half score line on the bottom okay because this is the front piece what we're going to do is we're going to remove so you've got that half inch score line at the top okay and then these two two and a half equal pieces on the left and the right this bottom one you will have these two squares here okay we're going to remove those squares completely so I would say remove the score line so I'm cutting to well, this is the right hand side here and then the left hand side up here. So I'm removing the score line. So you've just got two really nice straight pieces there. And again, just cut very neatly. And again, so it's a deconstructed box. It's all done. And that's well, sometimes it's easier when you do a deconstructed box. It's easy for you to be able to then adapt to your size. So if you do want to change it, um, make it smaller and things like that. And then what you'll have is obviously that half inch and you will have these kind of thin rectangle pieces either side. So there's one there, you can just see that shape. And again there, you're going to remove those completely. All right, so go back to our original. So now you will have this piece here, which is going to be the closure to your box piece inside. And then we'll have, we've got these squares here. We want to just cut down those score lines there just to that score line okay so I'm going to turn it upside down and then just cut all the way down and I will put a template up on my blog just again so this just makes a little bit more sense to anybody so then you've got these ones free okay so where we remove those squares here we're keeping them attached here just slightly and we're going to create these little tabs and this is for our closure now if you don't want to close yours like I said if you want to just have it open then you don't need any of this part at all so your measurement let me work it out in a second for you okay so so now I've just created these kind of tabs and then that's going to be, if I bring this around, it will be facing that way. Those two pieces will go in and that is the closure there. And then the curved piece is going to come over this way. So if you don't want any of that, then you will only need a piece of cardstock that is to 12 by eight and a half. Okay. And you would just score at two and a half on three sides. Okay. And it will give you the same just give you that bottom piece there my basically you'll have that shape okay two and a half two and a half and two and a half and just remove them that's if you don't want to have this box feature but I think I don't know I just like it I just think it adds something more to the, the finished piece anyway so that's the front piece done again you just want to fold and burnish these score lines so again, it will be exactly the same as what we've just done, but you won't have that kind of one inch piece there. So what we want to do along the bottom here is you want to cut up your two and a half and your nine and a half, but just to the first score line, like so. So the larger section here, you'll have this bigger section is the top, and then you'll have your two and a half and two and a half here, and then you'll have your... So whatever end where you've got the perfect two and a half by two and a half squares here, that's the bottom. These here are bigger. See, they're a rectangle. That's the top. So just make sure you've got it the right way up. Obviously, you don't want to be cutting like that down into here. So like so. And then flip it around. And these larger sections here, you're going to remove completely. So 
So they're the larger rectangles, whereas these pieces are squares, equal sides. That's the pieces that stay attached. And then what I will do, or what I would say you should do, is just take tiny little wedges off because these are going to be folded and stuck inside and they will form the base of our gift bag box, whatever it is we're going to call it. I think I'm going to call it satchel gift box, satchel gift bag. Let's see. Okay. So that's there what you should have. So now what's going to happen with these pieces, they're going to fold in and this is going to stick underneath. And then this piece is all going to wrap over the top of it and form the case. I'll just bring that piece out. So they will then go inside. This will then come over and close like so. And that will curve over. And once we add on this piece, you can see how quickly it all comes together. So first of all, you want to keep with this piece where we've got the base here, flip it over, and it's up to you what glue you want to use. I'm going to use some runner tape here. And you just want to add tape to the tabs here. Okay, so facing up with the print, and you're going to add your tape. So we do both of those. I'm um, sorry, yeah, add the tape to the top, like so. And then bring each one around and follow the score line there just so you've got yourself a nice right angle. And again, bring around that other one. And everything should line up nicely. And then just bring it up and just, I like to go over it with my bone folder. Because a lot of these tape runners, when they say they're permanent, that's when that you really fix them down. So I, if you go over it like this, that's if you try and peel that off now, you're going to peel off all of the um, the paper as well. And this is the dot and dab, which is by Trimcraft, and it's their permanent one. So that's that piece. And then with this section here, you just want to kind of curl it a little bit. You can use a ruler, or you can actually, you can't see me, but you can use the side of your desk. So if you kind of just like roll it around off the edge of your desk, you'll see now I've got it nice and curled and that is just going to form, it's going to kind of come to about there. All right, so that piece is now all ready. Then this piece here, so this is the top with the one inch. This is the base piece that we now want to stick. Now it's up to you. You can stick it inside, but if you stick it inside, you will see, unless you've done it really neat, I mean, I could get away with it, you will see this join here, but inside you will have a nice flush kind of base. Whereas if you stick it underneath, which is what I'm going to do, you will get a nice finish on the front, but inside you will see the tabs, but I'm not bothered about that. But that's the option there if you did want to change it. So for this piece, you want to add glue to the inside. So you want your pattern facing out and I'm going to add my tape here all along the bottom. Now if you're new to making gift bags and you might want to find that you use some wet um, glue just so you've got time to be able to move it around and like reposition it and things. So now this one I'm going to pop it this inside here and bring it down to that score line make sure everything's in where it should be and then bring this up and you've kind of got a little bit of time there just to make sure it all lines up nicely, open it up and then you can go in and just again make sure that that's all stuck down. And then these two sides are going to come up and stick to the sides here. So while it's all laying down like this, again I'm going to come in with my runner tape and oh, it's just run out. No wonder I was struggling with that one. Right, I'll get rid of that. I'm going to use another one and these are the other ones I use. These are by Taser. So these are really nice ones to use as well. Although I think that one's run out. Good job I've got an endless supply here in front of me. There we go. You know when they work because they run and glide really well. So I'm just going to do that one there. Go up to the edges a little bit more on that outer side. And I'm going to do both at the same time because once you bring one up, the other one will kind of come up naturally with it as well. Okay, so bring up this one, and again, it should all line up. Make sure I lie it down. Just make sure it lines up with the score line, and then the rest. When you bring up the sides, everything will marry up together. 
like so. And if you just pop it on the side and then you can go in again with your bone folder or your ruler or anything and just make sure everything's stuck down. So these side pieces are going to go in and that one's going to fold in like so. If it doesn't go in, if you find it's just struggling a little bit, take a very, very thin wedge off of the ends there of that one inch piece. But mine seems to go in really well and it kind of locks in there so I know nothing's going to fall out. Next you want to bring in this piece here and I'm just going to put glue all inside. I'm going to do it on both sides and then I'm going to lie this flat piece down here and you basically, it's, well you don't want to come down too far but I'm just going to kind of stick about a quarter of an inch down. For some reason mine's a little bit longer, I think it's because I've cut in a little bit but it won't matter. You just want to make sure that it's nice and straight. I'm going to use my grid here. So I'm going to line that piece up there and then I'm going to bring this bit over and that way I know that I'm getting it nice and even. Yeah, if it is a little bit longer, I think it's because I've cut in and removed the score lines on this piece. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you've got an even piece overhanging. If you can see there, I've got a little piece overhanging there and the same amount there. Then where you've folded it, bring it right over and just fold it in half. And just go and really burnish that all in. Like so. And now... Basically that the top of this piece that we stuck on should line up with the top of the box and that will give you then your nice kind of arch. I actually want to go in there and just give that a bit more of a shape because it didn't seem too shaped at the back. So I'm just going to use my ruler here. Yeah, that's better. Now I've got that nice curved piece there like so I really like it okay then we need to stick down this piece here so this sticks over the top like so and then these two pieces are just purely decorative and go here so I'm going to stick these down first I think I came in at one inch what was it no it was about one and a quarter actually yeah one and a quarter you want to come in and then stick it down so again I'm just going to add because it's only decorative, I'm just going to add a little bit of tape there. That's that piece. And then with this one here, what I'm going to do is just measure. So this is seven. So three and a half is the middle. And then, so that's sitting in the middle like so. And then I'm going to just grab a pencil. Just very lightly put a pencil mark just roughly either side there and then bring this over and then I can just add like so and just rub those pencil marks back out okay and I'll bring my buckle right up like so and then my velcro dots I'm just using the 16 mil velcro dots here so I've just got a pair together okay I didn't like that one that far down so I just peeled it off I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to have it here. So I'm going to put it there this time and have this actually flapping down. Like so, yeah. I didn't like it down there. It, it kind of bowed out a bit, whereas if I stick it there, this one seems to work better. That one was fine, but this one's a bit different. So play around with it. Again, I'm aware that not everybody's going to have that buckle anyway, so you can do something. You could put a nice um, flower there. Um, that would work just as well. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that just hanging, but I'm going to probably pop a little bit of hot glue in a moment and stick that down. Next bit, we need to do our strap. So for the one that i done earlier, i done white, but I actually think I prefer... So if I show you there, see this one was white, but I think I'm going to do the same. And because I've got this left over, so this you want to do um, one inch. So you want a piece of one inch by 12 or you can do one inch by 11 inches or a four size. It doesn't matter. OK, and then along the 12 inch side, you just want to score at one inch. So again, this is all optional. Some of you might want to use ribbon, but I quite like using the paper. Fold up those two there and then between the score lines you just want to curl it so now you will have that shape 
then I'm just going to open this up and you are going to stick it between this section here. So from the top of here, you want to stick it right in the middle, like so. So what I'm going to do is use some wet glue because this is stronger and I know it won't lift, like so. And then I'm just going to eyeball mine, but I know I need it about there. Just hold that in place for a second. And then the other side, just flip that piece over and again, add some glue. And again, just make sure it all stays nice and lined up. And it's as straight as you can get it with the other one there. But at least with the wet glue, you can kind of move it around a little bit until you're happy that you've got it nice and centered. Okay, so that's now stuck down. So next, when I bring that back over and close that up, you've got your handle right on the top. So next, I just need to finish it off with my little brads here. So I've already got my hot glue ready and I just pop a little bit in there. So I like to cut the brads down sometimes just so I can then use them more as an actual kind of decorative piece without having to kind of make a hole and stuff in my project. So pop this one here and I think this is so pretty. I haven't got any like little charms at the minute because it'd be nice to have maybe a little like bag charm, like a key ring hanging down or something. And what I'm gonna do off camera is I'm just gonna hole punch a circle and then pop some glue and put the circle over there just so it's nice and tidy underneath. But then that will stop my um, buckle coming off. But there you have it guys. I think that is adorable. I think it's so cute. I love that it's kind of a box and bag and I don't know, it's just, it's just got a really sweet look about it and I'm really pleased with it. So I'll bring in the other one as well. And yeah, I think they've turned out really well. This one's slightly different, so obviously I cut it different to start with, that why that, that's why that bit's a bit longer. But I think again, I'm gonna take my Velcro off and put the Velcro there, because you, can you see it's kind of, I don't know, just lifting a little bit more, but that's just me being picky. So there you go, guys. Hope you've enjoyed them. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.